Good morning. Here are our announcements for the week following Sunday, January 8th. The January Volunteer Worship sign-up is available online. Go to the church website and under the Serve tab, you will find a link to Sign Up Genius. Take a look and fill in when you can help make worship happen. Looking for a sweet treat? After worship today, our youth are selling freshly baked cookies. This will help offset the cost of their backpacking trip this summer. Our youth are also selling pizzas again. Order forms are available on the welcome desk. Feeling crafty? The crafty friends will meet today from noon to five. Bring your own project to work on and a snack to share. In this week's newsletter, you will find a blog written by Francisco about his adventures in Italy. His accomplishments are truly remarkable. Thank you again to everyone who purchased poinsettias, which made our sanctuary so beautiful. Today is the last day they will be here in the sanctuary, so if you would like to give one or two to a good home, please take them with you after worship today. We are looking for helping hands this Tuesday morning at 10.30 to take down the Christmas trees and decorations. We hope to see you there. If you'd like more information, contact the office at 920-788-6492. Have a great week, and I heard that the sun may come out this afternoon. Welcome to worship. Welcome, Christ the King, and welcome to our guests who have found us today. We are all part of the body of Christ, and the friendship that we share in Jesus has spread out to far away places, thanks to the internet and on our streaming and online services. If our congregation out there would like to be a part of us in any other way, please contact Christ the King and we can sign you up or invite you to be partners in however that works for you. Uh, let's see, there was one. Thank you, Jean, for your fine announcements and that aroma is going to keep wafting in here and it will be a sweet morning as we observe the epiphany of our Lord. Epiphany Day is, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks after Christmas. It's the day that is noted by the three wise or more or less wise persons following the star and finding Jesus. And in the midst of ordinary places, they found the salvation of the world. And so we come following the star of Christ to worship today on this holy day. Let's collect our thoughts and prepare for worship. And receive the invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Amen. Stand as you are able and we'll sing the verses of We Three Kings. Fountain, moor, and mountain, following yonder. 
my perfect light. The Confession. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior. Let us confess our sin. Join me. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of peace. We confess that we too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. You may be seated. Oops, let's have the prayer of the day and you may be seated for that together. Oh God, on this day you revealed your son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full wisdom of your glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children, come forward for a message, please. Hi. I'm not, I'm ne that's exactly right, Ian. Ian said, you're never too old and you're never too young for the children's message. And that's absolutely right. And when you're in confirmation class, will you still come forward? Oh, goody. Hi, everybody. I think I'm going to come down in front of you, and then you won't have to crane your necks, because... If you're going someplace, have you noticed when your mom or dad are traveling, they uh, might have a map? Do you know what a map is? Everything is GPS, yes. But in the, in the olden days, not that long ago, we used to have maps. And even farther, farther back, People would follow the stars and read the stars in the sky and use those as their guidance or where to go. And I'm going to, GPS, do you know what it really stands for, Ian? It's something about uh, global precision or something. But in, in the church, we call it, it's another word for the Bible. God's positioning system. Is that cool? Because in the Bible, we find where, how God wants us to live, and we learn about Jesus. And the story we just heard at um, Christmas time. All right, let's check our memories and see. You heard the story on Christmas Eve day. A lot of you were here. Tell me. How did Jesus' birth, who or what, first told about Jesus' birth? There were these shepherds out in the field. Who told them? Angels. Yes, first one and then a host, a whole mess of angels. But then, later on, later on, 
who were the next people to come and visit? It was the wise people, the three kings we sang about or how many. And who told them? Did an angel come and fly by? No. Who told them or what told them? What was in the sky that they saw? It's a star. It's a star. <laughs> they saw a star in the east, and they followed the star. And when they got to Bethlehem, where the star stopped, let me give you one of these big ones, OK? Um, where it stopped, they found what they were looking for. And they didn't even know they were looking for Jesus, the Savior of the world. So this is your star. And as Ian said, nobody is too small for a children's sermon. And do you have a brother or sister who's not sit, come up with you? Anybody? All right, you please give that. Yeah, I know, Leighton. Yeah, he's, but he's much older. All right, you do too? All right, good, good. So now you get to share your stars too. All right, so God in Jesus lent us that star many, many years ago for those wise people. But today, you are the stars you are the stars to tell about Jesus and how much God loves you. Does that work? So that's your little reminder. And if you want to color it or put your name on it or anything, you can take it home with you. Let's pray. How do we do this again? We take our right hand and our left hand, and we put them together, and we say, Thank you, Jesus, for being our star to guide us and lead us in faithful living. In Jesus' name, we pray. Shine on, sisters and brothers. Shine on. Here, Grandma, you can have one, too. Here, your stars, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're a star. Yeah, right. The gospel for today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all the Jerusalem with him in calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least of the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to, to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, Bring, my, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, 
they left for their own country by another road. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That's the first GPS was ever. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right, now let me see if I can uh, bring that message home. <laughs> oh, dear. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I know about you, but Christmas came awfully fast this year. Uh, decorations were out way before Halloween, and for me, I ended up just baking a half a batch of cutout cookies while all of my friends were doing their usual <laughs> nine dozen of whatever they make to do their cookie exchanges. And then, uh, as the countdown rapidly continued, I did a little shopping and wrapping just to get her done because I felt like I was under the gun. <laughs> and come, it did. Christmas came and went. And now, some of us are wondering, where did Christmas go? As I mentioned earlier, it's Epiphany Sunday and several weeks have passed since we had the last day of what we call the Christmas season in the church here. It's the last day that we'll probably hear Christmas carols or refer to the Christmas stories. It's the last day that we'll greet each other with Merry Christmas and then tag on a quick and Happy New Year. And it still looks like Christmas around here because we haven't completely undecorated. But it's the end. We have come to the end of Christmas 2022. We're back to our routines. Children are back in school. The work schedule is re-upped. Snowbirds have flown away. And life's returning to whatever normal was, even though we're still in that far from normal that we knew before pandemic. It really happened though. Christmas came when like ripples in a pond that just kind of fade away. We have boxed it up and put it in the attic or the storage area. And in spite of the quick disappearance, in spite of all the work and the planning around Christmas, I still like to see Christmas come. There's just that sense of lightness and it's a happier time of the year. If not for all the bright colors and the lights, it's for those college kids that have come home and actually have some time with us again. We get Christmas cards and letters from friends we don't get in touch with all through the year. And then in this season, even the children's faces are aglow because they too have joined in the song and the singing and the joy of awaiting our Savior's birth. I also like to see Christmas become because during this time, people in general are just a little gentler and kinder. We see the human race like it, God intended us to be. We're more generous and giving, even to strangers. Most of us are a little more thoughtful. And that's how we spend these days of giving and wrapping and exchanging gifts and resources that we have. But where does it all go? Do we keep that kind of spirit alive as we go forward? It's almost like we took 12 days and we got her done. There's a story about an old man. Oh, he was a crotchety old man, and he was sitting in his house one day, and he thought he heard 
a little voice outside singing. And sure enough, soon there was a knock at the door and there's a little boy. And he was singing with gusto. Hark the herald angels sing. And then launching into Gloria. Well, the man was not amused. And he said to the little boy, Sonny, Christmas was over weeks ago. Don't you know it's January 25th. It's over for a month. And the little boy replied, but I had measles at Christmas, and then I came down with chicken pox, and I wasn't able to sing Christmas carols. So here I am. Hark the heralding. Well, with that, the old grouchy, crotchety man slams the door, and I guess he didn't get that Christmas isn't just one day. How about us? Do we understand that spirit of Christmas that goes on or ought to go on in the spirit of Christ who is born on Christmas Day? When we ask, where did Christmas go, does that kind of suggest we don't get it? Because we know the credit card bill has come in and so has that we energy bill with all the extra lights we've turned on and extra people in our houses. And even some of us have even gone to a post-Christmas sale and did what we usually do the days after Christmas. Now I'm wondering, that's where we are in our world and culture, but what about the folks back then? Where did Christmas go for them? Well, we know the Bible says in Luke 2 that the shepherds returned to their fields, glorifying and praising God. Having heard the angels sing of this birth, the shepherds went to investigate and then they returned back to their fields, back to the ranch to tend their sheep and to cultivate their fields, to protect the little lambs, and even to wool, to shear the wool. There was routine work to be done. Life is like that for most of us. We return to our steady routines. We go back to our everyday living. And I find it interesting, and I really like this, that it was the manner in which they returned. They went back glorifying and praising God. They went back with an attitude of gratitude. So what does it mean for you and me to go back to where we were, praising and glorifying God? I think it means being more thankful for what we have and for the generosity God has showered on us, the forgiveness and the grace that we have received in the life, resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's praising God for these ordinary gifts in our ordinary lives. And through our regular routines, and even in rather unlikely places, God works in the world, carrying out the spirit and carrying on the spirit of Christmas. Okay, so what about the wise people? Where did they go? The Bible says, being warned in a dream, they departed to their own country another way. And I think maybe they had a more circuitous route to get back there. But I think that they returned as wiser people. For you see, their epiphany, that word, actually means to have sudden insight in the midst of the ordinary. It's a manifestation, a revelation, a broadening, a divine 
inspiration, if you would, of what is. And I think they were wiser for that because they knew that they had found God in the least likely place. They found God in a manger. And forever after, people, wise people, would be alert for those signs of meeting the Christ in those very places as well, the common. Wise people find Christ, and Christ finds us too, in our homes, in our work, in school, in our jobs, and in everyday existence. Because, again, the reminder, which one of our confirmation students illustrated for us, Jesus Christ was found in a manger, not in a mansion. And he's still to be found in those mangers of our lives where there's a sudden revelation of God's grace and mercy. And about those wise people, I imagine they returned happier too because their load was lighter. Remember, they had come with heavy gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And they returned with the indescribable gift of having a lighter heart for having been a giver. You get that? When we give, our hearts are lightened as well. As they gave to a poor family in need, the wise men had found a key to happiness. They discovered that God's secret is the giving of oneself, just as God gave God's self in the Son for our salvation. You and I return from Christmas in the same way. As we give of ourselves, and during the Christmas season, many, the back room is filled with your gifts for ordinary hygiene needs and creature comforts to be distributed among our neighbors. We find that in giving of ourselves to needy families, especially during Christmas, we give to the baby who is the Christ child that first Christmas Eve. And there's still one other one I wonder about. I know, but I, you probably haven't wondered, where did Jesus go? A little girl asked her mom, Mommy, did the baby Jesus live happily ever after? Did the story have a happy ending? The story did not end in Bethlehem. The family was warned to go to Egypt another way because King Herod had a decree to kill all the innocent children two years and under. There was that flight, and then the family returned to Nazareth and work in Joseph's carpentry shop. And then we know, we know Jesus' story, his great ministry, his parables and his healings and his teachings, his prophecies. And then there was the arrest, the trial, the crucifixion, the suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension. And more recently, the Son of God, the Spirit of Jesus, came to the heart of the valley, right here at Christ the King. For more than 2,000 years, Jesus is still bringing the presence of God, peace, justice, and mercy 
and filling us with gracious love. Where did Jesus go? Into our dark lives to bring us light and hope. Jesus, where did he go? He came into your heart and mine, into your life and mine. And his spirit of God's grace and peace are now in you as you return to your fields, your homes, your work, your school, and perhaps in a new way, glorifying and praising God. Irving Berlin, you know that famous lyricist, White Christmas, I think, to hear or remember one more Christmas song before we sign off. He said, the song is ended, but the melody lingers on. Christmas has ended, but the melody lingers on in our hearts. We sing the sermon hymn, which today is the first Noel. You may stand as you are able. Together we confess our faith. The words of the Apostles' Creed are before us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. And we share God's peace with one another. Thank you. Thank you for that. prayer. Together, God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. 
Today's prayer song is name, Jesus' name above all names. We will sing the verse, offer our petitions, and then sing the verse once more. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Guide the whole church with your wisdom, revealing God. Nurture our efforts with other religions, faiths, and denominations so that understanding around the globe, especially in places of ethnic and religious strife, may be held at bay and bring about peace. We pray for organizations such as Lutheran World Relief that offer humanitarian aid, disaster relief, and health care. Creating God, restore your glory to the earth, protect our fragile ecosystems, the rainforests, coral reefs, our wetlands, prairies, and shorelines. Guide us to treasure the rich variety of animals and plants that share our world, and especially those that are endangered. Righteous God, bring the nations into the way of justice and peace. Strengthen those who work for human rights, equality, and the protection of the most vulnerable. We pray for all in public office that they may serve with honesty and honor. Help those who have no helper delivering God. Rescue those who suffer from any abuse, neglect, or exploitation. Deliver adults and children who are caught in cycles of poverty and transform social systems that enable such racism and discrimination. Abiding God, accompany the ministries of this congregation as we go into the new year. Inspire us as we lead worship and teach and visit, pray, administer, and serve. Keep us mindful of the needs of others so that we may be a bright shining star bringing God's love to light in our community and neighborhood. We especially now offer to you the names and the hearts of those that we remember and ask for your guidance and help in their lives. These may be spoken out loud or quietly. Reveal your promise by the witness of those who have died, trusting in you, redeeming God. Receive our thanks for their witness and faith, and guide us by their example until we're gathered with them into your eternal presence. And now finally, pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Holy Communion here is served by intinction. You will receive a host, a wafer from the... Uh, server and it's to be dipped into the grape juice. Those who aren't coming forward for Holy Communion may come forward for a blessing. And if you're unable to come forward, we will come to you. Just let the ushers know. Also, we have the elements available in a basket. They've been prepackaged. If you choose to take one of those and bring that forward for a blessing, that will also work. There's hand sanitizer for your convenience. Uh, we have gluten-free uh, for our uh, offering uh, of the host. And here at Christ the King, the table is open to all. It's not our table as a congregation or a pastor, Nate's and mine, but this table is Christ's table. And he is present here to be, to feed us and to guide us as the star that he is in our lives. Communion servers, please come forward.
receive a blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now, are children going out now? No? When are they going out? After the benediction. All right. Which will come shortly after we sing, Arise, arise, let your light shine. <laughs> oh, your light has come. Join hands as is our custom here across the aisle and connecting us as one big family. You're a regular constellation, you know that? <laughs> Great. God bless you and keep you. And Jesus grants you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. All right, children, scoot, skedaddle, <laughs> and then we will have a sending. Go in peace, bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God. <laughs>